Hey guys, it's Matt with bleepingjeep.com. Today we're gonna fight zombies. Wait, we did that last week. Today we're going to use voodoo magic to turn this into this. Right. So today we're gonna take this uh, older two-piece axle shaft from a Dana 30. Uh, that came on Wranglers and Cherokees before 1991. Wait. 1991 and before. And we're going to swap in this later model, 92 and later, one piece axle shaft from a Dana 30 out of a Wrangler or a Cherokee. But first, check out the website, bleepingjeep.com. We've got all the best off road wins and fails of YouTube, none of the boring stuff. And don't forget to subscribe. All right, let's get started. All right, so here's both the shafts here. This is the older one that splits in two has the central axle disconnect right here and this is the new shaft, the one piece that we're upgrading with. You want to make sure you get this out of a 95 or later Cherokee because the 95 and later has the larger U-joints. Now the new axle shaft has a seal down here by the carrier and the older shaft does not so um, its shaft is up here on this larger area and as you can tell the seal from that is not going to fit on the newer shaft so you're going to want to get this kit. Now the kit comes with the new seal which fits down here by the carrier and it also comes with this block off plate. If you don't want to get the kit you can just get the seal and make your own block off plate but the whole kit's only $18. I'll leave the part number for that in the description. You also want to get some uh, RTV. You're going to want some gear oil, two quarts or a quart and a half and you also want to get a new U-joint if you got this out of the junkyard, that U-joint's going to be old, so you want to go ahead and replace that. Now, I've already pulled the axle shafts out. If you need to know how to do that, just look at my videos. I think it's called how to, how to remove and install an axle shaft in 13 minutes or something like that. Um, so I'm not going to cover that, but we'll cover everything else. All right, as I mentioned, I already removed the axle shafts. You'll need to remove both axle shafts to do this on each side, even though we're just going to be working on that one side because we're going to have to remove the carrier. Now, if you don't know how to remove the axle shafts, I have a video on that. I've also removed the tie rod end off of this knuckle here just to get that out of the way because we'll need to remove this. Um, I've also got a video on how to remove tie rods if you need to know how to do that. The next thing we'll do is remove the diff cover housing here and for that we'll need a little bucket. Now I'll just zip these bolts off. They're uh, 13 millimeter. Try not to lose them. This little tag right here should tell you your gear ratio if we clean that off. All right, I've got all the bolts out, and I'm just going to whack it with the hammer and let the fluid come out. All right, while I'm in here, I'll go ahead and get as much gear oil out of here as I can. I also want to check to make sure there's not pieces of metal in here. also want to check all the teeth while I'm in here and the spider gears to make sure that they don't have any damage to them and the pinion gear which is back there. Okay, once I'm done with that, before I start removing the pinion and pulling these bolts off, what you want to do is mark them. What you're trying to do is get everything back in the same position that it was in when you took it out. You want to make sure all the bolts are in the same place, all of the races are in the same place, uh, and these brackets here. So the way I do that, I don't know if there's a standard way to do this or not, but I just like to put a, a punch up here, hit that once for left, and at the top, I always mark it at the top so I know that's the top left, and two for right, so I know that's the top left and that's the top right. Now I can go ahead and remove those bolts with a 15, no that's not, that's a 5 8 Alright, now when I take that out, I'll make sure to keep the bolts in there like they were. And I'll turn it like this, 
and you can set it here if you'd like or you can set it down I'm just going to set it down over there so I don't knock it off and I'll do the same thing with the left side and I'll make sure to put that on the left side when I set it down alright so the next step is to pull the carrier out now this can be pretty difficult if it's never been out before what they do at the factory is use these pins and they spread the whole carrier apart they wedge that in there and then they let that loose and it locks in pretty good so uh, what you might have to do is get a crowbar and pull that thing out if you can't get it by hand now this really helps if you have two people but if not make sure you don't let it drop and uh, bust one of these teeth here I'm just taking a pry bar and putting it on this bolt and pulling. Now when it starts to come out, make sure you don't lose your erases here. Or if you do, make sure you just hold on to one so you know which one went on the left side and which one went on the right. There we go. All right, so now if you look closely, you'll see that there is a seal on the right-hand side here. And it just looks just like the seal that you bought for the left-hand side. Now what we're gonna do is uh, put a seal just like it on the opposite side on the left-hand side. This seal um, keeps the diff fluid inside the diff. Uh, on the left side, that was out further because of your two-piece axle shaft. Now that you have the one piece, you'll need to get this seal and put it right here. Now there's a couple ways you can go about putting this seal in there. It's a really tight fit and you have to be real careful because it's very thin. But uh, one of those options includes building a little jig like this. Um, you get a long piece of um, all thread and then you put a, a nut on it and you what, it, what you actually do is suck it in with this piece of wood. Uh, you put this through the axle tube and then just suck it down with that. Um, another option is just to take a hammer and a piece of wood and just try your best to pound it in without marring it or uh, bending it at all and I'm going to try that. So I'm just going to lube it up a little bit. I'll put it in place and I'll try my best not to bend it. trick is to try not to let it get crooked inside there. Once you get it in so far, you won't be able to go any further because of this uh, metal ring right here. In that case, I'll try and find a long uh, stick of wood or something metal that I can put through the axle tube and then pound on it from the other side. I can't really get the camera and the light and me in here all at the same time, but let me show you what I'm doing before I move the camera. I've got a, a long socket or a bunch of sockets put together, and then I've got a little block of wood that I'm going to put here, and then I'll just hold it like this while I use the hammer on the outside here and pound it in. And I'll put apply pressure at the top, bottom, left, or right, wherever I need to. Alright, so once I got it in there pretty good and I knew that it was going in straight, I started using uh, metal on metal here and I hit this with the hammer uh, on every edge until it went in flush. Now you can tell it's completely flush. Now I'll just use some grease to pack in there to keep that spring from popping loose. And I'll also lube the seal up to keep it from tearing when I insert the axle shaft. 